Hey everyone, today's video is about when Bakugo hits you for talking back to him, part 2. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And let's get going. The next morning arrives far too soon. You wake up on Kirishima's couch. The blanket tangled around you. Your body stepped from the uncomfortable sleep. The sunlight filters through the curtains, casting a soft glow over the room. But it doesn't bring any warmth. Instead, it only highlights the emptiness that lingers inside you. You slowly set up, rubbing your eyes as the events of last night come rushing back. The arguments, the anger, the head. Everything was still so fresh and raw. You feel the dull ache in your shoulder, where Bakugo had hit you, but the physical pain was nothing compared to the emotional pain that knows at you. Kirishima was already awake, sitting at the kitchen table with a mug of coffee in his hands. When he notices you stirring, he gets up and walks over to you. Concern etched on his face. Hey, how are you feeling? He managed a weak smile, though it doesn't reach your eyes. I've been better. He nods, his brow furrowed with worry. I made some coffee if you want. I wasn't sure if you'd be up for eating yet. You appreciate the gesture, but don't have much of an appetite. Maybe later. Thanks, E.J. He sits down beside you, setting his coffee mug on the table. I'm not gonna fish you to talk about it, but if you do want to, I'm right here. You glance at him, your heart heavy with gratitude. I know. It's just hard to wrap my head around it. I didn't think Katsuki would ever do something like that. Kirishima's face tightens with anger. He shouldn't have. And you don't deserve that, Wayan. No one does. You nod, swallowing hard as you try to process your emotions. I love him, Eiji. But I can't just pretend that this didn't happen. I can't go back to him right now. Kirishima places a comforting hand on your knee. You don't have to. You take all the time you need. You're safe here, okay? The warmth of his touch and the sincerity in his voice were enough to make you feel a little less lost. You're grateful for his support, more than you can express. But even as you sit there, trying to find some sense of normalcy, the weight of your phone on the coffee table next to you, it's so turned off, just as you left it last night, and you can't help but wonder what messages or calls might be waiting for you. Apologies, excuses, promises. It's so a bit too much to deal with. Kirishima seems to sense your inner turmoil. If you want, I can turn off your notifications. Or even block his number for now. Whatever makes you feel at ease. He takes a deep breath, considering his offer. It's tempting, really tempting, to block it all out. To avoid dealing with Bakugo until you're ready. But deep down, you know you'll have to face it eventually. And so you can't avoid this forever. I think I'll just keep it off for now. I'm not ready to hear what he has to say. Take your time. No rush. For the next few hours, you and Kirishima fall into a quiet routine. He buzzes himself around the apartment. Doing small things to make you comfortable. Fetching you water. Adjusting the cushions, offering you a distraction with a movie. You try to relax, but your mind keeps wandering back to Bakugo. The man you love, who's always been a whirlwind of intensity and passion, crossed a line last night that you never thought he would. And now you are left questioning everything. How did it get to this point? Is there any way to move forward? Can you forgive him? And even if you do... How do you trust him again? By the time evening rolls around, the weight of those questions feel heavier than ever. Kirishima, sensing your need for space, gives you some time alone, retreating to his bedroom with a promise to check on you later. As you sit in the middle of his apartment, you finally turn your phone back on. The screen lights up, revealing a barrage of missed calls and messages from Bakugo. Your heart sinks as you scroll through them, each one more desperate than the last. Wyan, please, I'm sorry. 
I didn't mean to. It's just a mistake. Just talk to me. I need to explain. Don't ignore me, please. We need to fix this. You close your eyes, the words blurring together. You don't doubt that he's sorry, but that doesn't erase what happened. It doesn't change the fact that he crossed the line. You never thought he would. With a deep breath, you put the phone down, your decision becoming clearer. You can talk to him now, not until you've had time to process everything. And just as you're about to turn the phone off again, a new message pops up, not from Bakugo, but from Kirishima this time, sent from the other room. I ordered your favorite takeout. Should be here soon. Let's eat together and then we can watch something funny. You don't have to think about anything else tonight. I'm not sure if you have your phone on, but if you do, then I'm glad you do, I guess. A small smile tugs at your lips, and for the first time all day, you feel a bit of the weight left off your shoulders. Thanks, E.G. I really appreciate you. Your reply. Days pass before you finally muster the courage to meet with Wakugo. The anger has subsided, replaced by a cold resolve that you didn't have before. You don't know what will come of this meeting, but you know that you need closure, whether that means moving forward, together, or parting ways. Kirshima insists driving you to the coffee, where you were meeting Bakugo. You got this, Oyan. Whatever happens, just remember you deserve to be treated right. Kirshima reminds you before you get out of the car. You nod, offering him a small, grateful smile. Thanks, E.G. I'll be okay. And as you walk into the cafe, you spot Baku immediately. He's sitting at a table in the corner. His usual confident posture, noticeably slouched. The moment his eyes meet yours, you see the guilt, the regret etched into his features. Let's just sit. As he stands up, when you approach him, he holds up a hand to stop him, sliding into the seat across from him. Bakugo hesitates, but eventually sets down. There's a tense silence between you. He's the first to break it. I messed up, Moyan. I know that. I've been a wreck since that night. And I didn't mean to hurt you. I know you didn't mean to, but it doesn't change the fact that you did. He flinches, that's your words. I've been trying to figure out how to make this right. But I don't even know if I can. Katsuki, I love you. I always have. But what happened? It broke something in me. And I don't know if you can just go back to the things. And how we were before. His hands grab the edge of the table. I'll do whatever it takes, Wyan. I'll work on my temper. Oh, I, I just don't want to lose you. The vulnerability in his voice sucks at your heart. I still need time, Katsuki. Time to figure out if we can move past this. He nods slowly. I get it. Take all the time you need. And I'll wait, no matter how long it takes. He offer him a sad smile. I don't know what the future holds for us, Katsuki. But for now, both of us do need space. Well, if you ever need me, Wyon, I'm here, no matter what. Take care of yourself, Katsuki. And with that, you walk out of the cafe, feeling both lighter and heavier at the same time. You see Kirshima waiting by the car as you step outside, his expression filled with quiet concern. Will you walk over to him, and without a word, he pulls you into a hug. Whatever happens next, I've got your back. And for the first time in days, you believe it. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And goodbye.